Looking for a fast, efficient, and affordable way to clean your art oil brushes? In this video right here, I'm gonna show you how I made my own cleaning bucket for your oil paints out there. Coming at you right now. Hey, it's me, it's Wild coming at you from my creative control playlist where I bring you the best tips and tricks. And in this video right here, I'm actually gonna bring you an art hack. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing and hitting that bell so you know when my videos go live for you. If you're an avid Bob Ross or Bill Alexander admirer just like myself, you probably paint in the wet on wet style. And if you do, you most certainly have had to clean your brush a time or two. Now, if you watch Bob Ross and the way he cleans his brushes, he actually uses a very effective slap method, which he kind of trademarked as beating the devil out of it. It works extremely well. Unfortunately, it has one big drawback to it. And just beat the devil out of him. You see, when you slap the brush and you release all of that vapor into the air, you have the option of breathing that in, and that is a big no-no on the health concerns. Even though painting has made leaps and bounds in actual technology of how the pigment and binder are much healthier in this day and age, the thinners are still toxic and the vapors that they release into the air are bad for you and your body. Now, I don't want to scare you because if you paint in a well-ventilated room or if you have a door or a window open, you're quite fine. Don't worry about it. But for a lot of us, we paint in a smaller room. So I wanted to show you what I created to help contain a lot of the vapors so they don't spoil your body and harm it, but allow you to clean your brushes quite effectively, easily, and it's the most affordable way I have found to clean your brushes. Let's go over to my workbench and let's go ahead and take a look. For our supplies, we're gonna need paint cans. Small paint can for small paint brushes, big paint can for big paint brushes. Next, we're gonna need chicken wire. I recommend picking this up at Home Depot or Lowe's. It only costs a couple pennies and you only need about one square foot. Next, you're going to need either really strong shears or wire snips. The inside of a wire snip is the part you're gonna be cutting with, so make sure you get something that's gonna be able to fit in between the chicken wire. Next, we're going to need some bolts, washers, and nuts, and you will have to measure these up depending on the chicken wire you get, because this will be fitting through the squares on the chicken wire, and it'll also depend on how deep you want your grate to be sitting off the bottom of the can. We wanna create a circle out of our chicken wire. And to do that, basically throw your can up and go around as it's mocked up by sitting on top there. Use the wire snips to cut out a basic shape. Be very careful when you start cutting, some of the poked ends are very sharp. So go a little slow, but you can muscle pretty much your way through this pretty quickly. Now that we have a basic shape that's gonna fit inside of our can that's gonna act as our grate, we have to give our grate some little legs to stand on so that way it's not sitting on the bottom of the can. To achieve this, we're gonna use a combination of bolts, washers, and nuts. Just to let you know, depending on the bolts that you get and the size and the length, you may not need washers. You generally need washers if you're gonna use a bigger bucket, but I just wanna show you all the supplies you're gonna need. You're gonna need three pairs, which includes for one leg, one bolt, two washers, and two nuts. Lay your washer on top of the grate and stick your bolt through the washer and through one of the corners of the square sections on the chicken wire. Then thread the other washer through and take the spare nut and thread it through to get it nice and tight. And when you have it all threaded through, this is what's gonna create one of the legs that this grate will stand on. Repeat this two more times on opposite corners of the grate. When you have completed the process, it should look something like this. Give it a nice little bend, that way it'll arc a little bit for your paint brushes and also allow easy access into the paint can. Just push it in, may require a little bit of muscle and just lay it flat with the bolts touching the bottom of the can. Depending on the bolts that you pick, your grate will be sitting about an inch to an inch and a half off the bottom of the can. Now all we need to do is just add paint thinner to it and we've got a perfect bucket for cleaning our brushes. Take your favorite odorless paint thinner and pour it into the can so the thinner sits just a few millimeters above the grate. Now we get to see this bad boy in action. I'm gonna take a little bit of phthalo blue and work it really good into the ends of these bristles and get a nice even coating, just like if you were gonna use it 
for actual use on a canvas. Take your dirty brush and gingerly take it across the grate that we created. This will allow the paint thinner to get into the bristles and pull that pigment out and let it sit on the bottom of the can. As you pull the paintbrush out, beat it along the sides like you would beat the devil, but this way all the paint thinner and vapors are contained on the inside. When you pull it out, you can take off a little extra paint thinner by you know, using the side of the can and use the paper towel method to squeeze and pull out all the remaining pigment that might have sat inside that brush. Just basically squeeze, wiggle, and pull, and then you can tap out the remaining color. And you're good to go and use this brand new clean brush. One reason I like to use the paint can is because you can use the lid to contain the actual spirits and the vapors for when you're not using it. But if you want above and beyond bro tip, I recommend grabbing a loose rag that you're not gonna need and a rubber band and you can put the rag on top and put the rubber band around it and pull up a little bit on one corner. So this way when you need to reach into paint you just pull the flap back of the rag, dip your paintbrush in, clean it off and then put the rag down. This will help contain some of the paint thinner in there, the vapors that would come off. And this is a really good tip for somebody who might be painting in a not so well ventilated area. Now this is a great way to clean off your brushes. You know, between the can, the chicken wire, the bolts, and the paint thinner, you know, you can make this for under 20 bucks. In fact, the actual bucket and everything to clean it out with actually only cost me five dollars now there is a great alternative out there that i want to show you this is the bob ross cleaning system this is what i would recommend if you're actually an avid painter and you want to take it to a step up i will do a full product review on this later because i actually think it's actually a really cool system it comes with a beater rack a smaller beater brush the paint thinner all you basically do is drop it into a waste paper basket and you're good to go but it's not kind of the same thing that i did with my bucket where you know you can actually put a lid or you can put a rag on it to actually contain in all of the vapors. But this is really cool. I will do a product review at this later, but if you guys wanna upgrade right now, I will put a link in the description below of where you can grab this at. Now, just a quick note, this wasn't a full tutorial on how to actually effectively clean your paint brushes. I will do another video on that later because a lot of people ask me, what's the best way to clean your paint brushes? And trust me, I'm working on the video, give me some time because I see a lot of people do it wrong and I actually did it wrong when I first started out. So stay tuned for that. Hey, thank you all for watching. Hopefully you learned something. And if you do build one of those buckets, go ahead and let me know in the comments below or if there's something else you'd like to, for me to show you in an art hack, don't hesitate, comment below. If you guys like this video, Go ahead and give it a nice thumbs up and remember to follow me on all my social media. And you can also watch me paint on Twitch. I paint there all the time, usually Monday through Thursday. And if you wanna go above and beyond, feel free to follow me on my Patreon and help me out because I'm doing my best to bring you the best videos I can to unlock your creative adventures. I will see you all in the next painting video coming up real soon. Take care, peace.